Yo, what's going on guys? I'm Mike from Obox, and in this video, we're gonna be going back in time um, a couple months ago when we talked about displacement maps in After Effects. But a lot of people asked for the tutorial, so here we are. So anyways, let's just jump into After Effects and get started. Just an FYI, the project file for this is on our Patreon. You can go ahead and follow the link down in the description at the $5 level. So I'm just gonna start by creating a new composition, composition new. And I'm gonna make it a little bit wider. So I'm gonna make the width 2000 and the height 1000. So actually making it a little bit shorter. Um, frame rate of 30 frames per second is fine, um, but I'm actually gonna reduce it down to 24. Duration 10 seconds, that looks good. So I'm just gonna start by creating a layer new solid and I'm needed this to be gray. So again, if you didn't watch that displacement map tutorial video, you should go check it out. But basically the gray value when using displacement map is actually zero. So it kind of, the way I thought of it was white was zero, black was a hundred or black was zero, white was a hundred. Doesn't work like that. Gray is zero and white is plus 100, black is negative 100. So I need kind of a neutral gray color. So I'm just going to select kind of this gray ramp down on the side, but over here I can kind of fine tune it and change this B value on the HSB to 50%. I believe that's 50% black and hit okay and hit okay. And now we have our neutral gray color. I'm just gonna lock that layer so I don't accidentally grab it. And I'm going to create a circle holding shift to make sure the circle's perfect. I'm just going to center it up in the composition. And I don't actually need a fill, so I'm gonna turn the fill off, but I will increase the kind of width of this to like 30, or maybe even like, I don't know, 60. I don't know, well, maybe let's kind of cut the difference. So let's do 40. And I'm gonna set a scale keyframe S on the keyboard, bring this down to zero. And then at around three seconds, I'm just going to bring the scale up just until it's off screen. And it doesn't look like that keyframe got set. So let me do that again. So you can see that this circle just kind of expands across the screen. Next thing I'm going to do is I will look for an effect called echo. Drop it on this, set this to negative one second and increase this the number of echoes to like four. So what this does is it will kind of echo this for four copies and then stop. So that's perfect. But I'm gonna add another effect called fast blur. And I'm going to increase the blurriness to like 60. So now I could duplicate this layer, control D, bring this over so we have one second there. I'm not gonna quite make it perfect but I will set it to, I don't know, somewhere just before halfway. So 24 frames per second would be 12. So I have it, let's set it to like, I don't know, 10. And I'm gonna change the color from black to white. So now we should get kind of a back and forth black and white sort of look, which is perfect. And now I'm just gonna select both of these layers, hit T on the keyboard, set a keyframe, U on the keyboard to see all of my keyframes and just come to the end here and set the transparency to zero. We should get something that sort of looks like a wave. Okay, now we will come back to this composition and kind of mess with these values in a little bit, but let's just go ahead and create a new composition and bring this in. And you'll see what I mean when I, when I say that we might need to adjust this a bit. So I'm just gonna create a composition, new comp, set it to 1000 by 1000. And I'm just going to drop this original comp in. And I'm actually gonna rename comp one by hitting enter and calling it displacement. Displacement layer. And now I can create my black and white, half black and half white. So I don't need a stroke. I'm gonna set the fill color to black is fine. Kind of make a square over my comp. I'm then going to, with the same layer selected, make another rectangle until it looks about halfway. It doesn't need to be perfect. And I'm just gonna set the color to, of this one to white. And now I'm going to go layer, new, adjustment layer, and look for an effect called displacement map. And drag it onto my adjustment layer. 
and I'm, for my displacement map layer, I'm going to select displacement map. I don't need to change the source, but if I had other effects on that, I could. I will not be using much horizontal displacement, but I'm going to change this to luminance anyway, but I will be using vertical displacement. So I'm going to want to set this to luminance. Now you could barely see some displacement occurring from this displacement map but I'm going to increase the displacement amount. Okay, that looks pretty good. It's a lot of displacement, so maybe 180, or I'm sorry, uh, maybe 90. Cut it in half. Now you notice that it starts with a bump down. If yours isn't starting like that, let's say maybe your displacement map colors were opposite, you all you would need to do here is change this to negative 90 and then it would just reverse it so you, one thing that you should notice here is that this is sort of like having a weird bounce that's kind of unnatural okay so jumping into this layer here let's see what we need to change um, i'm going to reduce this box blur amount i'm just going to actually turn it off on both layers and i think our issue here is you know, when we go a distance, you can see we have a peak, we have a mid value, so this should be zero. And then we have a valley, and then we have increasingly large mid values. And so one thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna increase these up to maybe like 90. And you start to get some weirdness on the edges, but honestly, um, you know, that's fine because it starts to dissipate towards the edge anyway. It's really that center value that's really important. Um, the other thing I'm gonna to try to change is I'm gonna change this to like negative 0.8. So my echoes come in at just a little bit faster. Um, and let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to um, turn the fast blur back on, come into my comp and see that it looks a lot, it does look a lot better. Um, obviously the amount is really high while we were testing, but, um, but you can see that looks a lot better. So I'm gonna change this to like maybe 60. That should give us a good amount. So that looks that looks pretty good. Um, if it's not happening fast enough, I would avoid touching this. Honestly, this kind of causes issues because layers overlap and stuff. Um, I would rather just set a time, enable time remapping and kind of come to when this thing ends and set another keyframe. And then kind of like shrink this up if it's if it's happening too slow. The next thing we need to do is we need to add the kind of the, the circle that, that lands in the water. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new ellipse. And I do not need a stroke, but it is a little bit small. So I'm going to hit S on the keyboard and make it a little bit larger. Put this into the center of the comp. Oh, actually before we do this, I wanna show you one other tip that like this looks, this is super symmetrical and it looks cool and all, but if I just take one of these layers and I like move it just off axis just a little bit, you will get a little bit more variation. Like the more you move it, obviously the bigger the difference. Like if I move it all the way up there, you could see that it's all crooked now. But if you want something that looks a little bit different and you could of course, you know, keyframe this to move it, um, you can do that. And I like when it looks like not quite perfect. Um, there's something about perfection that just kind of like your eyes spot really quickly. Okay, so now with this ball, I'm just gonna hit P on the keyboard. The whole thing is pretty much position. So when it's about there, that's when it hits the water. And then I want it to sink. So I want it to kind of be in the water a little bit, like obviously when things sink, they sink a lot slower than when they just fall to the air. So I will have that be extended and obviously we'll fix the timing here, but I can't see it actually as it's underwater. So I'm gonna search for invert. In my effects, drop it onto the sphere. I'm gonna rename this to circle and rename this to background. And so when this sphere starts, just before it touches the water, I'm gonna say blend with original 100%. And then as it's underwater, I'm gonna change this to zero. 
and you could see there that it will kind of sort of transition before your eyes but this is going like super slow so i'm just going to grab all of these keyframes and move them over and i'm going to add some smoothing here to these position keyframes okay so here we are on the speed graph and you could double check by just making sure you're on speed and let's just kind of set an easy ease first and let's see how we want this to look. So I, I, I don't want it to like hit the water and stop. So at our kind of center point when it hits the water, I, I, I do want some speed value because you know this thing should sink in the water. Um, it won't hit the water and just stop. I'm gonna bring my starting speed up really um, it shouldn't it should kind of hit the water and so I think that looks good it's just going a little slow so I'm just going to select these keyframes and just kind of pull them up a bit So obviously you don't you don't want the wave to start before the water or before the ball hits the water. Just changing the speed of the wave. The wave does have a kind of a weird characteristic where it sort of appears to speed up over time. If you were to keyframe this time even then it sort of has a weird look to it like this is probably the hardest part about using displacement maps custom displacement maps is that it's like not intuitive how to make the motion work so it's so much trial and error and actually trying to recreate it originally it took forever because like sometimes things just work and when you have to recreate it it's like impossible to recreate and that's kind of the situation that i got into when i was trying to recreate this um, even after you know doing it myself the first time so it looks like since we move that we need to kind of change these values change when this starts um, one last thing that I did was I added a fast box blur to this circle so as it hits the water um, it does sort of kind of fade away a bit not a lot and then also from a transparency perspective T on the keyboard it also should sort of fade away a bit. Not 100%, but just kind of look like it is sinking into water. And last thing is I'm going to add motion blur to this because some of the effects that I'm using, I think motion blur actually helps a lot. Okay, so now that this is all done, let's do the whole like flippity doodah thing so this thing loops. Because right now this would loop, but it's not quite as interesting. So I'm just gonna select all the layers, Control Shift C. Control shift C. By the way, I turned all of the lights off my keyboard because it looks really cool when it's all black, but that means that I didn't now don't know which keys I'm pressing. Um, so I'm just gonna name this, I don't know, main comp. So th th this, is, this is how we're gonna get away with flipping this. So right about here at three seconds, this is when, this is actually like two and a half seconds, this is where we can get away with flipping it. So I'm gonna hit R on the keyboard. And I'm gonna have this thing flip like over a second and a half. So this to 180 and flip. And I'm going to hit um, Alt and bracket. I'm going to duplicate this layer, hit you on the keyboard and move it over. Select both of these kind of keyframes. And I will add some smoothing using, using this motion script by Mount MoGraph. If you wanna copy it, that's kind of the, the graphs that you're looking for. And now I just need to use an invert on this other one. Oh, yikes. Okay. So you can see there that our displacement map appears to be adjusting where our center point is. Oh, okay. I think it's actually just this, this layer in general. So I'm just going to drag this down just so it's in the center. That shouldn't affect anything. Okay. Hit N on the keyboard. And now I'm going to pre-comp these two because there's some stuff that I'm going to do to this that... Honestly, if it's not pre-comped, it's kind of a pain. 
I'm gonna name that flip comp and I'm going to add a layer new adjustment layer. And so I'm gonna start kind of adding stuff to this. I'm also gonna add a layer new solid, make it black and put it down beneath that. Okay, so I'm gonna need two adjustment layers. The first one, oh wait, let's go back to flip comp. Let's make sure that these have motion blur on because I also think that you get some cool artifacts here um, in the next kind of piece that makes it kind of a little bit more interesting when you have some motion blur. So I'm going to add a CC lens that's gonna go on my first adjustment layer. And I want something kind of like that. Just set that to negative 200. This value doesn't really matter. This kind of gets you that CRT look. I'm then going to add Venetian blinds to my flip comp. And I like to make this so just so like you start getting like weird banding effects because that's kind of what it looks like when you film a TV. You get some weird banding artifacts. And I'm also going to add a tint to this. And I do have some colors off screen that I'm going to select, but I'll show you what they are. So the colors are sort of this like teal blue and then like really dark blue purple. And I'm going to add a glow to my top displacement map. And I'm just going to kind of adjust the settings a bit. So my Venetian blinds are sort of kind of losing out. You know, and there's obviously some stuff that you can do just by messing around with this. Okay, I can honestly mess around with this all day long. Okay, so one last thing is I'm noticing that this is kind of being cut off. And the reason is, is you can see here that the layer doesn't fully go across. So I'm just gonna cheat this and go reptile, CC reptile, and expand this in all directions. Change this to unfold and copy and paste this onto the other one. So we get the same, same effect there. And so that way when I come back to this, it all appears to be rotating within that comp. So anyways guys, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give this video a like. Go ahead and send us stuff on Instagram and Twitter of creations that you used in this technique of displacement maps. Just an FYI, the project file for this is on our Patreon. You can go ahead and follow the link down in the description at the $5 level. We have access to all of our project files that we've created over the last few years. So definitely go ahead and check that out. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching.